Ingenuity completed its 52nd flight nearly three months ago, disappearing from radio contact with Perseverance upon landing. Now all the images are down, documenting the flight and how a Mars helicopter doesn't really need four legs. On this episode of Mars Guy, the helicopter team anticipated that Ingenuity would lose radio communications with Perseverance at the end of its 363 meter flight on April 26, but no one knew how long it'd be before the rover would drive back into range. It took 63 days. Since contact resumed on June 28, Ingenuity has been transmitting a trove of images from flights dating back to February including this spectacular view of a hill dubbed Pine Stand. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Flight 52 started at 3.20 in the afternoon, with the shadow of Ingenuity's rotors providing a convenient 1.2 meter scale bar in the fisheye view of every navcam image. Ingenuity turned west and flew over a collection of rocks that are residents of the land of odds that I described in the previous episode. The odd rocks here actually provide more than just tittering amusement. They offer a genuine scientific question. What processes can reduce rocks to just shells of their former selves? The hollowing out of so many of these rocks seems inconsistent with just sandblasting. Maybe there's chemical erosion going on too, like some process is dissolving these rocks from the inside out another Martian mystery. There's nothing mysterious about a small circular depression on Mars, just another eroded impact crater filled in with wind-blown sand. This one's so small that only the highest resolution camera in orbit around Mars can see it. Same with these small sand ripples that are barely recognizable from orbit, but offer a pretty dramatic scene from the bird's eye view of a mechanical bird flying 12 meters above the ground. It's a landscape feature to be avoided by Perseverance heading to the same destination. Next up is a clear transition from the bouldery terrain of the ancient inverted river channel to smoother but intricately fractured terrain that appears to be under and therefore even older. It's hard to say what caused the fractures or even what kind of rocks host them, but answers may come when Perseverance arrives. Ingenuity flew across this transition and over the fractured terrain, then turned back for a landing before entering into dicier terrain. It spent about 12 seconds evaluating its options using its recently upgraded hazard avoidance software before deciding where to land. It's almost like seeing how Ingenuity thinks. I wonder what it thought about the fractures because apparently it wasn't concerned enough to avoid this one, coming in for a landing that straddled the trough. Fortunately, it's shallow enough for a half meter tall helicopter to land safely in, but one of its feet never touched the ground. Notice the gap between the shadow and the actual foot and the slight adjustment during the one and a half seconds after touchdown. The same view three months later, just after 10 in the morning, shows the foot is still in the air. The view out the front with the color camera nicely shows a well-planted carbon fiber foot and another one just barely in the scene, as is normal. The grainy image reveals pebbles and cobbles with both smooth surfaces and what may be the gnarliest texture yet seen on the mission. And strangely, some of these rocks appear to have both textures, like we're seeing them go from smooth to gnarly by yet another mysterious Martian process. In the end, landing on three feet is just a minor feat on the list of Ingenuity's major accomplishments but it does raise the question of whether a future helicopter could give up a fourth foot and its leg to allow for more payload. 